Hey everyone, this is Sebi from Valorant Central. Welcome back to another video on the channel. So in this video, we're going to be covering a basic guide to the game Valorant. I'm planning on starting a series where I cover a lot of basic Valorant guides and instructional videos showcasing some important general info about the game. Seeing my friends first start playing Valorant, it was clear that there's a lot to know when playing this game, and I don't feel like there's a great place to get all of that info. For those of you who are very experienced with Valorant so far, I understand this video won't be tailored to you, but I would still appreciate your continued support. There will be other content coming on this channel, so stay tuned for all of that. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and without further ado let's get into this video. The first basics video of the series will go over general Valorant info. This includes how the game works, the controls and the agent usage in the game. So when it comes to Valorant in general it's a team based FPS game where two teams of five compete to win. The game is set up in various rounds where you play first to 13 wins and you'll either be attacking or defending. If you are attacking your goal is to plant a spike on one of the bomb sites or kill all of the enemies. And if you're defending, your goal is to prevent the spike from detonating and or killing all of the enemies. Halfway through the game, which would be 12 rounds in, you will switch sides. So if you were attacking, you will now be defending and the same works the other way around. Currently, there are four maps in the game's rotation, three with two bomb sites, that being Ascent, Bind and Split, and one map with three bomb sites, that being Haven. What makes Valorant different from a normal FPS game is the option to play many different agents, all with varying abilities. Currently, there are 11 agents in the game, and when you first start playing, you will have access to 5 agents to play. Once you have played some matches, you will be able to unlock an additional 2 agents for free, and this can be done from the Agents tab on the home screen. You can also unlock other agents by activating and completing their contracts by playing the game and gaining XP. To join a game, you must first select the game that you want to play and then select the play button. Unrated is casual game, Spike Rush is a quick game mode style game, ranked is competitive style with a ranking system and custom matches are for you to play by yourself or with your friends. Once you join a game, you'll have the option to select an agent to play and each team can only have one of every agent, so be sure to select your agent first if you'd like to play them. There are four types of agents to choose from when doing this. Duelists are agents whose abilities favor them getting a lot of kills and initiating fights, and this includes Phoenix, Rays, Jet, and Reyna. Controllers are agents who can break up fights with smokes and help their teams set up in a better position, and this includes Brimstone, Omen, and Viper. Initiators are agents that are great at helping their team take over in contested areas, and this includes Breach and Sova. And lastly, there are Sentinels who are great at playing defensively and holding down different areas of the map, and this includes Sage and Cypher. When choosing what agent to play along with their abilities, you could find more info about them by hovering your cursor over the agent in the startup screen. Now when it comes to the overall controls in the game Valorant, I'll be covering the default controls that are preset when you start the game as this is what most people use. You can however change the controls if you'd like in the settings menu. Once the game begins, you'll be able to press B to purchase weapons, shields, and abilities. This can also be done at the beginning of every new round. The game has a built-in economy-based system where you get money for kills, round wins, and playing the objective. I will not be covering the money system in this video because I've already made a basic economy guide which will be linked in the description if you'd like to check that out. The main buy screen shows you all of the gun options you have, the right side shows you two types of shields you can purchase for extra health, and the bottom bar has all of the agent abilities you can buy. For more info about the agent's abilities, you can also hover your cursor over them to see more info about them. Each agent also has an ultimate ability that can be used, but different agents require a different number of ultimate points, and this can be seen in the ability HUD as well. You can get alt points by either getting a kill, dying, planting or defusing the spike, or getting the alt orbs scattered around the map. Now once you're in the game and have purchased your weapons, you'll be able to move around with WASD and change your view with the mouse cursor. This is pretty standard for all FPS games. Now to switch between the different weapons you have, you can either use the buttons 1, 2, and 3, or you can use the scroll wheel as well. Keep in mind you will move slower depending on the size of the gun you are holding. You will move fastest with your knife out and slowest with heavy large guns. Some guns also have the option to aim down sight, and this can be done by right clicking on the mouse, and shooting is done by left clicking while reloading can be done by pressing the R button on your keyboard. When you are shooting the gun, keep in mind that hitting enemies in the head will do the most damage, hitting them in the body will do medium damage, and hitting them in the legs will do the least amount of damage. When it comes to using agent abilities, this can be done by using the Q, E, and C buttons on your keyboard, and the number of uses left for each of these abilities will also show up on the bottom HUD bar when you are playing. The X button can also be used to use your ultimate ability in-game. 
The game's map can be seen in your top left, but you can also open a full view of it by pressing the caps lock button and the scoreboard can be seen by using the tab button on your keyboard. You also have the ability to ping things in game by pressing Z when you're looking at them or by clicking your cursor on the map when you open it with caps lock. When you hold down the button to ping, there are four different options that also show up. These are more specific types of pings such as enemy here or moving to this location. So they're helpful to get used to when you wanna give your team more information. Two very important controls in the game are shift and the control button. Shifting makes you walk silently in game. So when you walk around normally, your footsteps can be heard and the range on which your footsteps can be heard is shown by circles surrounding your player head on the map. When you hold shift, this visual goes away as you're no longer able to be heard and you will move silently. Keep in mind that you will move slower when you're holding shift, so it is a situational button to use. Now what control does is pressing it allows your agent to crouch. Crouching will reduce the spread of your bullets when shooting. Now when it comes to other controls, you could also do more cosmetic features in the game like spraying by using T on the keyboard and also inspecting your gun by pressing Y. Chatting is also an option in the game and this can be done by pressing enter and then typing what you want to say and pressing enter again to send the message. Messages will send to your team by default, but you can send the message to the whole match by pressing shift and enter to send the message. That pretty much covers all of the Valorant basics in this video. I'll be going more in depth into other game details in other videos, so be sure to subscribe to not miss out on those. Remember to like this video if you did find it helpful, and that's about it for this video, and thanks for watching.